Hi, this video is a basic introduction to those who are new to the hobby on the importance of height and positioning of antennas. Hope you find it useful. Your antenna is arguably the most important element of your shack and its positioning can make a significant difference to your transmit and receive ability. Having your transceiver, feed line and antenna all performing at the best is key. Basically, they need to complement each other. A bit like hi-fi, there's little point in putting a poor set of speakers on a top-end system or matching a good sound source with poor headphones. You won't get the best out of all the components in your investment. Similarly, in radio, a quality transceiver can be let down by the rest of the system and vice versa. Effectively, height is might. And what I mean by that is the higher you can get your antenna, the better it will perform. But positioning is also key. An antenna in open space away from buildings and other obstacles will also perform better than one close to objects, which may interfere with its ability to radiate and receive RF signals. So even antennas that are meant to be ground mounted also need careful consideration about their positioning in relation to buildings and metal objects like washing poles, fences and so on. The height above ground performance of an antenna has a direct relationship with its operating wavelength. The higher an antenna is, the greater number of wavelengths it is above the ground and the generally the better it will perform. Here we see a 20 metre dipole, 5 metres above the ground, which is in effect a quarter of a wavelength high. If we add a 2 metre low a collinear at um, gutter height, again 5 metres, um, the uh, effective number of wavelengths it is high is now 2.5 compared to its operating frequency. So the height in wavelengths is relative to the frequency of the antenna. And it's easy to see the effect of raising the height of antenna using modeling software. So here we are in some antenna modeling software. I've input a simple wire dipole for 20 meters. Uh, and that's a good representation of the current. You can see a high current in the center of the dipole. But if we place the dipole at three meters it's made of copper wire three meters which is reasonable height it would seem 10 feet well above your head uh, and run the calculation the far field plots so this is the view from the top of the antenna looking down uh, and this is a representation of the rf from the side you can see a nice bubble uh, a lot of the rf going uh, up uh, not much down in this uh, lower portion of where you would expect uh, DX signals to be received or sent from, um, but um, nonetheless a good antenna and typical. So now if we go back and remodel the antenna and this time put it at say seven meters which might be the height of your gutter and recalculate And this time you can see the bubble RF starting to change shape. Nothing significantly different. But now if we go back and put the antenna say at 10 metres above ground. So this is the top of your roof, chimney. And recalculate. And this time we can see the RF bubble changing shape. And now there is more gain um, down this end as well as more gain for sort of local uh, thousand mile hop uh, transmission. So there you can see the height is affecting the uh, where the uh, antenna works and how it radiates and is how it receives as well. So here we have a, a two meter Yagi just to show the effects of VHF. So if we, um, this is made of aluminium pipe as opposed to copper wire. If we put this at gutter height, five meters and we can see here um, there's no more RF in this bubble uh, but the effect of a Yagi is to direct it in this particular direction the way you want it and for typical use for terrestrial use uh, you're interested in this lobe at the bottom here so we can see there at good height five meters at six degrees off the horizon we're getting about 16.2 uh, dBi of gain and there's the uh, the top view of the yard. You can see how wide the beam width is. So 16.2 at 6 degrees. And now if we go back 
and put this Yagi on the top of the roof and start again. You can see there's more lobes to this now and that is 16.3 so virtually the same but it's now at 3 degrees so that lobe's got lower and the higher you put the Yagi the lower this will go uh, and the more gain and the more um, useful the Yagi becomes in terms of pushing this RF down towards the receiving station uh, at the horizon. Um, these lobes can be useful in, in other VHF work but particularly you're after that. So if we were say on a really really tall mast, uh, 20 metres which is beyond most people and we look again you can see how that's changed again. Now that is at one degree uh, 16.4 dBi so you can see how it affects the RF. So that bubble from being an oval or a circle is now directing in the in the direction and you're pointing the Yagi. So you can see how the height of a VHF antenna uh, can affect its properties, very similar uh, but more pronounced uh, than a HF antenna. So when it comes to the HF frequencies, most of us have to accept the fact that we're unable to get wires or beams up much higher than our houses, as towers and masts are generally out of the question. Uh, but other than ground mounted verticals, it's still worth ensuring you've made the most of your site and push your antenna up those few extra feet higher if you can. So here we've seen the collinear move to the chimney pot and the dipole attached uh, higher up on the roof and uh, an extension to the supporting pole. And as well as height, you will remember I also mentioned the importance of open space. Generally, it's the higher frequencies such as VHF and UHF that are more affected by nearby obstacles. And that's why you'll see TV aerials and satellite dishes are mounted high on houses to, to get a clear view of the uh, transmitter. Um, some of us work happily with loft antennas and stealth antennas, and that's great. And others go portable, uh, perhaps to overcome the restrictions we might have at home. Another aspect of height is where you are physically located. Height above sea level and your relationship to your geographical surroundings can also impact the efficiency of your station, but there's little you can do about that as that's where you live, or at least where you currently live. You can of course work portable. Remember though, although you can be high up, you can still be in a dip or blocked by higher points around you. Being very low down at sea level may also seem a disadvantage, however being actually close to the sea is a big plus in terms of how salt water can improve your propagation. Being low down is not much of a problem on HF frequencies in the lower amateur bands, especially if the general area you live in is flat with little in the way of hills or mountains. The longer wavelengths of the lower frequency bands are less affected by your distant surroundings, unlike VHF. Finally, to give an example of how VHF and UHF is affected by your antenna's height above ground level and your height above sea level, I can compare my UK contesting experience this year. Uh, when weather permits, I work portable at a location which is 460 metres high above sea level and I use a mast height of around 6.5 metres. But during the months of Covid lockdown in April, I attempted working from home. Now I don't have beam antennas at home, so I managed to set up my portable Yagis through the toilet ensuite skylight window. So in this scenario, the antennas are actually higher above the ground and also above the roof line of the house at around 11 metres. But my house is only 44 metres above sea level. The equipment in both setups is the same. So you can see from these comparison results what a difference working portable and getting both out in the clear and up high can achieve. Uh, I've highlighted April, the uh, the month I work from home, uh, and for each of the bands you can see uh, the position and the points I achieved. Uh, the grey uh, represents I, I wasn't contesting at that point in that band, uh, and the hyphens represent missed months. As you can see, uh, April on two metres, uh, 65th was the position I got from home, uh, but working uh, portable, uh, the best I've achieved in August is 6th. Similarly, on six metres, I got 75th position at home in this category. Um, but the best I've achieved is third in July, working portable. Um, and so on, uh, early days on 70 centimetres, but you can see, see similar there between April and July. 
Um, so it just shows um, that's empirical evidence, so to speak, of the difference uh, of, of your location and how it can affect a VHF working. So to wrap up, um, the key messages are your antenna is a critical part of your station. Get your antenna outside if possible. Get your antenna as high as possible and try and get your antenna clear of objects and surroundings. And remember, you can always work portable. So if you've got uh, restrictions at home or, or noise even, which we haven't covered here, um, there's always options of working portable. Well, I hope you found this video useful. And there follows just a quick summary of some other YouTube channels that I watch. Uh, you might find them useful too.